Hello and welcome to Linux Server Training 101. My name is Don Crawley. I'm the author of the Accidental Administrator Linux Server Step-by-Step -Step Configuration Guide and also Tweeting Linux, 140 Linux Configuration Commands Explained in 140 Characters or Less. This time we're going to show you how to change Ubuntu Server's IP address from DHCP assigned to static. It's based on Linux distro uh, Ubuntu Server 1204, but it should work on most versions, most recent versions of Ubuntu. Here are the steps that we're going to go through. We'll use a text editor. The one I'll use is VI, but you know your preference will work for you if you prefer Nano or Pico or whatever. Um, and we'll modify a file called Etsy Network Interfaces. Then we'll restart networking. We'll verify the change to the IP address and the DNS client. And then we'll disable the DHCP client if desired. Not required, but it may be something that you want to do. Here are your prerequisites. You'll need a computer running Linux. Again, the one I'm using is Ubuntu Server 1204. Um, you may wonder, will this work on Red Hat, for example? And the procedures are different on, uh, on other Linux distros. So this will work on Ubuntu Server. You'll also need root access and an initial configuration for DHCP, which you'll then modify for a static configuration. Here's your disclaimer. This video is provided solely as a courtesy to you, our viewer. There are no guarantees whatsoever. Do not attempt these procedures on a production server without first testing them for security and suitability in a lab environment. Performing these procedures may open your server to possible attacks, so make sure you have current backups and take precautions including data encryption and additional access controls to protect sensitive data. Okay, let's do the demo, and let's start by just taking a look at a couple of the settings on the server. The first thing we'll look at is our IP address, so the command is ifconfig, and as you can see, our IP address there is 192.168.1.118. Let's also take a look at our DNS client with the command less etsy resolve.conf. There you can see it shows the name server 192.168.1.1, and Notice that it's a dynamic resolve.con file. Uh, it just means that it got its information from the DHCP server. Let's touch Q to break out of that. And let's go about the business of reconfiguring our server for a static IP address. So the first thing we're going to do is modify the interfaces configuration file with the command sudo. And then I'm going to use vi. Um, that's the text editor that I prefer. Maybe you like Pico or Nano or Emacs, whatever. It doesn't matter. That's entirely up to you. But I'm going to use VI and we'll modify slash Etsy slash network slash interfaces. There's the configuration file. Let's go down to the very last line with the command shift GG. And let's go over to the very last entry there. You can see we're under the primary network interface and it is ETH0. And we're going to change DHCP to static. So I'll use the command CW for change word, then static. And we'll come down one more line and we're going to put in the IP address with the command or the statement address 192.168.1.4. We need to configure our uh, subnet mask or net mask with 255.255.255.0, standard 24 bit mask. We'll configure our default gateway with the statement gateway and then. 192.168.1.1. That's the address of the firewall at the edge of my network, and that's typically what you would use. Um, presumably, you'll know what your gateway is. And then, uh, one thing I noticed in a lot of the configuration guides on the internet that they omitted uh, the next two statements, and um, so they're pretty important because they deal with name resolution. You need to specify your DNS servers, and uh, so let's do that with the statement DNS names. Uh, name servers, and then whatever your name servers IP addresses are. The ones that I'm going to use are from OpenDNS. Maybe you have your own internal ones, or maybe you like Google, whatever. Um, just you'll specify them here. So 208.67.222.222. Then the other one is 208.67.220.220. And the last thing is an option, but I like to add it. That is the default search domain. So DNS dash search, and then soundtraining.net. A little bit of shameless self-promotion there. We'll touch escape, then colon WQ for right quit to save the file. And let's take a look at our IP address configuration now with the command ifconfig. And notice that it hasn't changed. And the reason it hasn't changed is because we need to restart networking. So here we go with sudo, then service, network dash interface, 
restart. Then you have to specify the particular instance, the network uh, interface that you want to restart. And this, uh, this command is in all uppercase. So interface, and it is case sensitive. Then equals and the name of the interface. And as you'll recall, well, the one we're working with is eth0, ethernet0. Hit enter and it restarts. Now let's do the ifconfig command again. And there you can see that it's got the new static IP address. Let's take a look at our DNS client while we're at it. So we'll use less, then etsy resolve.conf. And you'll notice that it added in the default domain for searching and the two new name servers, but it also left in place the old name server. And the, the reason that it did that is because the DHCP client is still running on our server. And you know, maybe that matters to you, maybe it doesn't. Um, but if it does, here's how to remove that. So we'll touch Q to break out of the less display, and we're going to use the command sudo, then dh client, oops, do you have to spell it correctly, and minus R to release it. Now let's take a look at the DNS client once again, and notice that it's gone. If you want to bring it back, you can use the dh client minus one command. Let's take a look at it. Notice that it's not back, but if I go in and restart networking again, so we'll just touch the up arrow until we see that command to restart networking. And now let's do the command dh client one. That minus one just means do a, uh, a uh, re renew one time. Notice there was a slight lag there. And let's take a look at the resolve.conf file and it's back. So you can remove it with minus R and bring it back with a minus one. If you'd like more information, please visit our website at www.soundtraining.net. I blog at soundtraining.net slash blog. Um, you can like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. Find me on LinkedIn. Just search on my name, and I will accept your connection request. And if you'd like more videos, they're available at our video channel at www.soundtraining.net slash videos. If you'd like a companion book, uh, there's a couple that I've written that may be helpful for you. One is the Linux Server Step-by-Step -step Configuration Guide. It's really based on Red Hat products and CentOS. But then there's the Linux Command Reference, which I wrote called Tweeting Linux. It's 140 Linux configuration commands explained in 140 characters or less. The idea behind it, it has nothing to do with Twitter other than the idea of very, very brief explanations. I'd gotten frustrated with some of the really long man pages and info pages in Linux, and I thought, gosh, there's got to be a way to just give a very brief explanation of how these things work, and that's what I tried to do with uh, tweeting Linux. So it's uh, brief explanations, screen captures, and details when required of uh, 140 of the most common Linux commands. I, I think you'll like it, and I'd love for you to have a copy. They're both available through the bookstore at www.soundtraining.net slash bookstore. Well, I hope it's been helpful for soundtraining.net. I'm Don Crawley. I'll see you next time. <laughs>